Welcome to the Holistic Dentistry Podcast, the show that gives you the tips and tools to detoxify your mouth for a healthier body. Okay, everyone, welcome to today's show. I'm very excited to talk about fascia. And with me, we have Bonnie Kratzer. And I'm very excited you're here, Bonnie, because nobody knows what fascia is, or at least most people don't know. Right. Thank, well, thank you so much for having me, Dr. Sanda. I'm so thrilled to be chatting with you today. And yes, introducing people to fascia and what fascia is and what it means to understand it within your body is a game changer. So I'm excited to jump in and talk about all that today. Yes, absolutely. And you know how we met, uh, for everybody to know this, is that I was having a shoulder problem and uh, uh, Laura, one of our mutual friends, was like, oh my God, Bonnie is amazing. You know, she's helped me. I take her classes on fascia. I'm like, I had no idea you can even exercise fascia, number one. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you really helped me, you know, with the movement to do, um, to, to be able to release my shoulder. Right. You're, you're super knowledgeable about that. And I do want to talk a little bit about who you are for people that don't know you. You have an extensive background in dance, body work, yoga, Pilates, and biomechanical flexibility and strength. You developed your own movement method and platform called The Floss. Is it thefloss.com? Well, it's yes. The Floss. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. To educate people on the often overlooked source of health, our fascia network. Bonn's fascia flossing classes, which you must try, by the way, <laughs> from private sessions to re-sculpt the body's foundational structure through a personalized combination of physical manipulation, guided resistance movement, which I personally loved, and engaged muscle elongation techniques. The floss is all about remapping your network of fascia. Something that, yes, you can do. By using an engaged elongation technique, we can cause an internal exfoliation of your structural connective tissue. At the floss, people find space and comfort in their bodies that they didn't even know they could have. And you have classes that are curated to alleviate scar tissue, for example, densified fascia, stagnation in the tissues that can cause physical pain, yeah. for an immediate sense of improved mobility, tension relief, um, and posture, which is so important. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> so tell us what fascia is, because I think a lot of people listening don't even have any idea what that is. Right. So this is so important. Fascia, a lot of us have heard this buzzword, right? We hear about fascia blasting or rolling out our fascia. And really, fascia, simply put, is it's the tissue that connects all other tissues. Um, it's our connective tissue network. It forms a matrix-like structure that is using compression, tension, and suspension to hold us up and keep all of our parts together. And if you want to picture it, um, best thing to do is to go online and look up on YouTube um, Dr. Gimberto's video called Scrolling Under the Skin. So you could actually get a real visual. But more of a, you know, um, the best visual we can do is like a spider web, like a gorgeous spindly spider web. But the fascia takes on many forms. So it can be spider web like, but it also can be sheath like. So like a beautiful piece of silk fabric wrapping our bodies just under the skin or wrapping our organs, etc. So fascia is hard to describe because it takes on the form or of whatever it's wrapping or forming. And it is truly our structural foundation because fascia is our railroad tracks or our scaffolding. The fascia is forming, the connective tissue is forming as you're forming an embryo to create the spaces and to create the actual formation of everything down to your organs, the cell wall, the bones. It's so ubiquitous as Joanne Avison says she's one of my teachers and continuous it really is a part of every single part of us but besides being the great connector it's also the separator 
So it creates compartments in the body. Like you don't want your respiratory mixing with your digestion or your middle digestion mixing with your elimination systems. So it creates separation. And that becomes really important when we think about things like cancer. When um, cancerous cells become disorganized, they'll cross over fascial boundaries. And and that kind of just gives you more of a a visual of what the fascia is meant to do in terms of keeping things separate from one another. Or for instance, you wouldn't want your lung fascia punctured, the fascia that wraps the lung, because then you would have a collapsing lung, which is not good. So yeah. So uh, is fascia elastic or is it basically tight like an eggshell membrane? Good question. Um, all of us have elastin in our fascia. So baseline material of fascia is mostly collagen, usually about 90% collagen, a little bit elastin, a little bit of hyaluronic acid, and then some baseline minerals. Um, But they're doing these interesting studies based on where um, your ancestors are from, you'll have a slightly different composition. So if you are from far north, you might have more elastin in your tissues, or I can't remember the data, but or vice versa, you might have more filaments that are a bit more collagen like and collagen is fun to think about collagen in terms of the fascia, because one, it's a triple helix. So if you think about that DNA double strand helix that's wrapping around each other, collagen has a triple helix. So it makes it super strong. And so fascia can be stronger than steel per weight. But then there's this um, hydration component to the fascia, which makes the collagen, we can think of it like liquid crystal. So we're all semi-crystalline, which is cool. And crystal, if you think of crystal in a in a lighter, when you rub crystal together, what does it do? Yes. Makes friction, right? Or That's electric. right. Yeah. So energy. Heat. Exactly. Energy, heat. Exactly, exactly. So fascia is actually a great conductor of electricity. And so that's really interesting, um, been studying, and we can get into this later about um, how fascia relates to chi or um, Eastern medicine practices, um, because I believe that the fascia is transporting our life force. Um, And one more thing I was going to say about that is... It, it slipped my mind, but I'm sure it'll come back. But yes, sure. um, oh, piezoelectric. The hydration. Yes, um, fascia is piezoelectric. That's another word for creating your own electricity. So the more we move our fascia, electricity we're generating, and the more what I think, the more chi, the more life force we're moving. Oh, I love that. So basically, do not stay stagnant, right? Don't sit on the couch. We need to move in order to generate our own electricity within us or the life force. Exactly. Absolutely. Fascia loves to be moved around. And one thing to know about fascia is it's our great protector or our great stabilizer or our great organizer. So if you're someone who has to sit at the computer all day, all the time, the fascia will start forming in a way that supports you to be most efficient in that position. So that's why when we get up, we feel all stiff because actually the fascia is that fast. It's actually helping us stabilize in that specific position. So we do want to, when we're working at the computer, I know I have to for hours on end, get up every half an hour and just give yourself a wiggle. Keep shifting your position. That's great advice. I want to come back to this hydration because most of us are dehydrated. Right. Yeah. And and you mentioned it's important to to, to, uh, get hydration in the fascia. Uh, Mm -hmm. if, If the fascia gets dehydrated, what happens? Yeah, it, well, it becomes brittle, it becomes yeah. cold, it becomes dry, and it's uh, less supportive to circulation. If the fascia becomes dense, dry, matted, it's decreasing the ability for what's called called differential movements or all of our parts like if I lift my arm up my lung tissue actually has to go down even as my arms coming up so if you think about it getting dry and sticky and brittle those gliding and sliding movements within the body are harder for that to happen Uh and of course you know when that 
when it's dry, then we increase the temperature. So it's increasing inflammation. You can see stagnation due to dry fascia. For a little personal story is when I first met my teacher, Bob Cooley, I had very dense tissue because I was a professional ballerina. So I thought my rock hard solid quads were, you know, cool, but actually it was just a bunch of scar tissue and my quads. (laughs) (laughs) And so as I started working out my fashion, starting started to internally exfoliate my tissues, my hydration quality went up. And so my body was changing in structure in terms of posture, but I wasn't gaining weight like um, per se, but I was gaining hydration capacity. So actually the scale was going up because each individual fascial fiber was uh, able to house more fluid. So if you think of these kind of spindly fibers, or it's called a micro vacuole, if, if, fluid can be held within the fiber, then you're hydrated. But if um, the fascia is denser or brittle, it's not holding as much hydration. So I used to feel like Mm. pounding water nonstop. And then as I started doing this work, I could drink a more reasonable amount of water without directly peeing it out because my fascia, my tissue was able to hold that hydration. So that's something And that's key, right? For skin health, for all functionality in the body. Absolutely. But so so essentially you're saying that if we have like hard rock abs, for example, that's not a good thing, right? They should be absolutely. Okay. Yeah, that's a good that's a good thing that we can differentiate because uh there's a gradation of health of fascia right let's say some incredible athlete over here maybe Simone Biles like she was probably born with really incredible tissue that's hydrated and functional um and also she works for it of course but let's say that she, let's just imagine that she has really fantastic tissue which i imagine she does and then over mm-hmm. here is like scar tissue dense hard plasticky matted not moving well the opposite of what we want <laughs> scar tissue zone right that's kind of yeah. what happens and then in the middle we have dense fascia over here and then kind of like good tissue over here. And so um, the the most fantastic tissue has a gush to it. Like if you see an athlete shake their thigh, it goes gunk, 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 gunk. Uh-huh. It has a gush. So um, the all the different types of tissue are m- meshing well, the muscle tissue, the, the fat, the fascial tissue, there's kind of this cohesiveness. And I would say when I had that really densified tissue, there there's less cohesion or in, in other words, like the fascia was really hard and then the muscle was trying to work against the fascia anyways. So, so in this big scheme of things, it's just a matter of, you know, keeping things fluid. That's really it. Right, keeping things fluid mm-hmm. and having the correct ratio of muscle tissue to fascia because fascia can work like a tourniquet if it is dense because it is wrapping each muscle group, each individual mm-hmm. muscle, and then down to each muscle fiber is enveloped in another layer of fascia. So if you think of those Russian egg dolls, it's fractal. Or if you cut a grapefruit open and you see the first layer of fascia would be the the peel and then you see the pith and then each slice of the grapefruit has another encasing that would be just like our muscle and then even down to the little tiny filaments in the grapefruit that's another encasing of fascia and that's how our muscles are and so if the fascia becomes dense it tourniquets the muscle and 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 decreases its ability to volumize or to strength train right The, the the muscle has to be able to expand in order for us to get stronger. And if the fascia is binding that tissue, then it's you're going to have a hard time, even if you did a million reps of of bicep curls, but you had scar tissue here for for whatever reason, often we don't have scar tissue in our bicep, but it would be like, I'm trying to strengthen my bicep, but I can't. So yes, makes sense. Now, uh, oftentimes, when I do surgery in the mouth, I you know, open up the gum and I see connective tissue. Is fascia connective tissue? Yes, exactly right. So 
you know, fascia is kind of a new frontier and it really hasn't been codified what we decide, determine what is connective tissue and what is fascia, but both, they're really the same thing. <laughs> yes, yes, they all connect. Yeah, they mm-hmm. all connect. Fascia in Latin means to bind. And so there's some anatomists who will designate, but for our sake, we'll just keep it as it's all connective tissue. It's all fascia. Right. So let's talk about flossing and not the kind of flossing that a periodontist would typically talk about, (laughs) but we're going to talk about fascia flossing. What is that? Yeah. Well, like you would do in your mouth with, uh, you know, our our periodontic flossing techniques is we're cleaning up between the teeth, right? And so I kind of coined the term because I had this feeling like, oh, we are cleaning up our tissues or we're we're helping bring them back to their more homeostatic state. So this is how fascia flossing works. Um, we use uh, an engagement or contraction. Some people know this as an eccentric contraction as we go into an elongation phase. So animals do this all the time. You know how they grab on the ground and they're like, Rrr! or we actually do it when we yawn in the morning. We're adding engagement as we're going into elongation. And that's termed as pendiculation, pendiculation. All that means mm-hmm engage as you move your tissues around. And the animals know to do this because instinctually they know it helps their tissues be healthier and to move. Without fail. <laughs> yes. And you can pendiculate any area of your body, which is fun. So it's just adding resistance as we elongate in space. And so if I was going to um, do a pendiculation movement, oh, so what we're doing is we're taking that concept and we're applying it to every major muscle group in the body. So we want to pendiculate the quads, the hamstrings, the calves, the traps, blah, blah, blah. So if I was going to do that to my bicep, I would contract my bicep, maintain the contraction, and then start to elongate it as the contraction still maintained. So what's happening there? And I'm sorry, folks, for not who don't have a visual, but I'll just give you a visual here. So our tissues are meant to the muscle and the the fascial tissue or myofascia are meant to slide on each other when muscle tissues contracting fat muscle and fascia tissue are contracting. They're meant to slide and glide as we elongate. They slide out like this. If the muscle tissue and the fascia are more condensed or matted, disorganized, you have an adhesion, you have a knot, that organization is going to be less. So what we do is we add that pendiculation action, action, we add an engagement, we're engaging the tissues. And then as we start to elongate with that elongate, or sorry, that engagement maintained, As we go into elongation phase with that engagement maintained, the tissues start to reorganize, which is so cool because you're applying tensile force as you elongate through that tissue, the fibers, the filaments can start to realign and reorganize. And we, um, my former teacher, Bob Cooley, did a study with Dr. Gimberto in Bordeaux, France and watched it with an endoscope, watched these fibers reorganizing. But what also happened, which is cool, and this is kind of even more of the flossing concept, is that as that engagement plus elongation phase is happening, Some of those fibers that are brittle, dry, old, whatever, start to break Uh up and go into your elimination system to be rinsed out of the body, poop, pee, sweat, or cry, and it's out. Very nice. Say we were working on your shoulder, right? We were flossing your shoulder. We were trying to move stagnation, but also clean up any scar tissue that was hanging out in your shoulder. And that's probably what happened. Then a sense of spaciousness comes uh is is um realized a sense of comfort because the tissues are more organized so that's what flossing is and that's why i say it's kind of like an internal exfoliation is because we're really cleaning up the tissues or helping them reorganize now listen before we turn this into like oh i got to go after my body and i got to floss it and i got to internally exfoliate my tissue 
by the way, internal exfoliation isn't exactly what's happening, but like it's an easy thing to understand, right? It's just kind of a fun yes. way to explain what's happening. But, but before we go after our body, we really have to be like, wow, how incredible that my body adapted to what I needed it to do, right? Because yes. in your shoulder or in my quads, my body was adapting, my fascia was adapting, being like, oh, we need to support and sustain this area for whatever reason it was. And people are always like, well, why do I have dense fascia in my hamstrings? I'm like, well, you tell me. You know, what, yes. happened so what are you doing? Life? Yes. What happened in your life story that caused you to have dense hamstring or dense tissue in our hamstrings? But guess what? Almost all of us do. I'll give you a couple of reasons. Sitting down, walking on concrete, not squatting like we used to do as farmers or hunter gatherers, et cetera, and just like lack of movement. But um, so I can give you those kind of cultural significances, but like, were you a cyclist or were you like a runner when you were a kid and that like gave you dense tissue in the back of your legs or why do I have scar tissue in my ankle? Oh, I rolled my ankle six times when I was playing volleyball, <laughs> you know? That's so a good reason. Yeah, for me, it was dentistry because I'm in the same position holding this elbow up high. So that repetitive motion really created a problem in the back. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes when you ask yourself, oh, why is my tissue dense over here? You can, you know, the answer. Yeah. yeah. So, but how amazing that your body adapted to try to support you. And then the pain comes and that's just a signal like, oh, hey, let's, let's support ourselves somehow. And I found exactly. that natural flossing is a great way to support. It's really the, the best way I've, I've been able to support all my injuries from my dance career. Great. So, so if somebody's listening to this and, you know, they're having aches and pains or they feel stiff, like how does somebody start fascia flossing? Good question. <laughs> well, um, fun way to go. There's some free videos on my YouTube channel. You can um, just look up my name, Bonnie Kratzer or the floss or fascia flossing works well in a YouTube search. Um, and joining my email list, you'll get a free uh, five day class series. And then I teach on Zoom twice a week so people can fascia floss with me. And that is a, a self-practice. And then, of course, there's the supported practice like you and I have done one-on-ones where I'm doing more hands-on fascial manipulation um, where you resist as I move you in space, whereas when you're self-practicing, you resist and move yourself in space. Both are fantastic. Both have great benefits. Um, really important to uh, self-floss on your own to maintain what's going on. And sometimes we need a little bit more a booster to get us going so a private is useful. But I have a whole online database too if you want to become um, a member of the floss. Uh, there's over a hundred videos and you can find videos from different timestamps from two minutes to an hour. You can work on your shoulders. There's one for stress. There's one for digestion, headaches, ankles, everything you can think of. I've tried to film it. So, and if you have a Amazing. request, take them. So That's yeah. That's great. <laughs> um, two minutes you mentioned you have a video for two minutes can you really like uh, is it for a particular area or or is it a, like a full body kind of floss in two minutes oh good question I think the two minute one is for your hamstrings and I find because the hamstrings are so dense with accumulated fascia that if you can target the hamstrings you really feel like a different person and I always say five flosses are better than zero so and five flosses <laughs> take you 30 seconds to do five hamstring flosses on each side and really can just completely change your day so five are better than zero <laughs> that's right because the hamstrings are also connected to the lower back right uh -huh. so right. so it's not just for your hamstrings it's probably if you're feeling pain in other areas of your body Absolutely. The hamstring fascia links right up into the lumbar spine, into the SI joint, and then, of course, determines the tilt of the pelvis. And if our pelvis is tilted too much in either direction, you can have a little compression in your low back. Any tilt in the pelvis will then also um, 
determine the, the posture of the rest of your spine. So really setting ourselves up from the pelvis up will can alleviate any kind of back stuff. I really, my trouble was my neck from my dance career and changing my hamstrings was actually the thing that alleviated my neck pain and reset the vertebra in my cervical. Yeah, I'd completely lost the curve in my cervical spine. I was like, 100% diagonally straight and changing my hamstring tissue is what changed my neck. Yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. I'm sure there's people listening with neck pain and they never realize that by working on your hamstrings, you can alleviate neck pain. Absolutely. Yeah. So how often do you recommend somebody to do uh, flossing? Is it daily? Is it once a week? That's a good question. It's all very personal. I can't quite answer it for each individual. But I think starting out a couple times a week, three times a week, you want to kind of get ahead of the tissue. If that's feeling really good, you could do a couple longer practices each week and then do like five to 15 minutes each day. I always do. I usually am at dance class or I go on a run. So I'll do a little flossing before or after. And then I do a couple longer practices of self-flossing each week. Great. Yes, because we want to maintain also. And five to 15 minutes, everybody can find during their day. It's not like an hour workout, you know, or heavy or intense. Yeah. And if my- somebody cannot move, but let's say they're bedridden, is that something they can do in order to help their fascia? Yeah, they might need someone to help move them in space, but... Often um, times people who are bedridden can get a lot of benefit out of this because uh, an eccentric contraction actually uses a lot less energy than a concentric contraction. Like so a, a, a traditional bicep curl versus going in the opposite direction, that's an eccentric contraction. So if there's someone to help them with the movement part, um, it can be a very therapeutic modality, certainly. Mm. Um, and there's probably, there's a couple self things you could do if you were in bed, for sure. I definitely have a few chair flosses uh, in the video portal for, for folks that aren't on their feet or getting on the floor as much. Oh, great. Yeah. Um, let's talk about the significance of Eastern Medicine Meridian Roadmap oh. and how it relates to fascia. Oh, it's so fun. Um, I just have such a gratitude and a wonder and astonishment with how amazing Eastern medicine is, that the wisdom of Eastern medicine. And it kind of blows my mind how much they figured out without the technologies we have today. And there's some acupuncturists. Uh, there's one man in particular, Dan Keown, who's in London. He's a PhD acupuncturist but also a Western medicine doctor. And he wrote a book called Spark in the Machine. I recommend that to anyone who's curious about this kind of thing. But he explains how he thinks the fascia is actually creating the channels in which the chi flows. And so that based on our embryology, our fascia is designed and organized in a specific way. And so it actually lines up and is relative to the Chinese medicine meridians or the Eastern um, medicine meridians. And mm. I find this very interesting because as I am I was deeply working my fascia when I first learned this, you can feel the chi moving through the fascia if you're kind of really zoned in. And some of you out there have had acupuncture where you get a needle and it zips up the leg, the, the chi, the, the energy zips up the leg. Well, I'm pretty convinced that it's the fascia transducting that electricity. So yeah, I've had acupuncture many times and I know exactly what you mean, absolutely. especially where there's stagnation in the fascia and the needle goes through that definitely can can trigger a, a signal. Yeah. Dr. Helene Langevin did a great study on this too, especially when they twist the needles. It's actually twisting the fascia and it changes the electrical messaging between the points between the needles and through the fascial network. We know that the fascia works on the nervous system, but the nervous system is also wrapped in fascia. So yeah. yes, very true. So yeah. yeah, so when we're flossing, if um or let's let's say it this way, 
uh, if I'm working on someone's shoulder and they and I'm working the small intestine channel because I'm using the Eastern Medicine roadmap to guide me as I'm, I'm moving people through space. So I, I have patterned movements that are relative to the meridians. So if I'm working their upper shoulder and I'm like, oh, this is small intestine channel. There's some scar tissue here. This is interesting. I wonder why there's some density here. And my intuition lights up and I might ask them, I'm like, how's your gut health? And almost always, if there's scar tissue in the small intestine channel, they're like, well, I have a little bit of this. I have da da da. Like things are going on with the gut. So, um, uh, you know, we can, it's not for diagnosing, but it's for clues and like interesting little, little treasures on your on road. Your road. Business. Absolutely. Because in the end, uh, everything is connected from the top of our head to the bottom of our feet. I use the energy meridians as well in dentistry. When we look at, you know, if there's stagnation in the tooth itself or a chronic infection, that's related to, let's say, the small intestine as well. So sometimes I also think that entire meridian can be affected if we see stagnation. Absolutely. And it can go both ways, right? Like if you're having gallbladder trouble, it might be initially from your gallbladder as organ, but was it stagnation built up in the gallbladder channel that then decreased the, the functionality of the gallbladder itself? Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, and I agree with you. It's amazing that thousands of years ago, somebody actually <laughs> mapped out the acupuncture meridians. <laughs> amazing. Like, what a gift, right? Wow. Yes, definitely. And and uh, now just to go on to uh, how it's connected to oral health, fascia, of course, yeah. it is also, you know, in the head and neck area. Of course. And a lot of my patients who are, uh, are clenchers or grinders, like I had somebody yesterday, actually, she is basically having a really hard time. Her muscles here were like rocks on the side of the face. Her neck was like a rock and her teeth are starting to be sore from the clenching. Right. So how can someone like that find relief with fascia work? That's such a great question. Like you just said, we want to think holistically when it comes to that level of tension working the tissue, of course, in your upper shoulders and in your neck is going to give you relief in the chest and the scalenes. Um, getting interoral work, of course, getting some folks who do um, cranial sacral interoral fascial massage, as you know, could be really fantastic. But really getting the quality of the tissue overall in the whole body to be to soften up a little bit to relieve that tension and to become more pliable and elastic is going to give great relief. And again, going all the way down into the legs, even not just thinking upper back. For instance, the stomach channel in Chinese medicine actually starts just under your pupil and zigzags around your face and into your jaw. So stomach seven is right at the hinge of the mandible. And then it comes down here next to your voice box, through your chest, through your nipples, down the sides of your belly button and into your lateral quads. So your outside quads. So I'll throw in a little personal story here, which is when I started getting worked on, uh, uh, 200 quad flosses were ordered on my body. So I got wow. 200 quad resistance stretches. And what happened, it was so crazy. My face is narrow in general, but it was more narrow. And every day I could literally see my face incrementally going out and out and out. It was very slight, very subtle. But it, it, my face changed because that chain of fascia from the quads relative to the jaw, remember this is the meridian and the meridian is related to the fascial chains. It was compressing my face. And so wow. changing my quads actually changed how much uh, fascial tension was being applied to my jaw. And that was the thing that helped me stop grinding my teeth. And, you know, I still struggle with jaw tension here and there. I'm like, okay, well, let's work on quads and stomach channel, which is associated with going right through the quad, is also in Chinese medicine associated with overall muscle health. 
So if I'm feeling like I'm tense overall, I'm going to floss my quads because that's just signaling all of my muscle tissue to relax. Yeah. Fascinating. I had no idea there was a relationship between your quads and clenching and grinding. Yeah. But um, yeah, I'm I'm going to uh, try this myself, actually. But how long would it take to floss the quads? Because that's a pretty big area. That's a big area. I, you know, you'd have to be consistent if you really want to change in your jaw. So I would do 25 a day to start with. There's some simple ones you can do on your back and then you can make your way up to more advanced exercises. But I would do 25 Hmm. a day on each leg, try it for a month, you know, give yourself a day break, like once a week, if you need a break, of course, do that. And, but you're also going to have to work your hamstrings because the hamstrings has, have to contract if the quads can elongate. So hamstrings and quads every day for a little while. Also, the hamstrings are going to help with the tension up here and see how it goes, see what happens. But consistency is key when you're trying to get ahead of your tissue, like I mentioned earlier. Yeah, absolutely. Because uh, you know, there's no magic pill and there's no magic movement. You have to be consistent and do it over a period of time, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Because yeah. oftentimes I get asked, well, is there a quick fix? And uh, I don't know, is there a quick fix with fascia? Yeah, well, uh, I don't think so. <laughs> but the good news <laughs> is like when we worked on your shoulder for the first time, there was a significant amount of change, right? We didn't build Rome in a day, but we had a good, this for me yeah. personally, this has definitely been the most efficient way to support my body. And I love getting everything done. I love massage. I love rolling. I love acupuncture. I'll go to acupuncture every single week for the rest of my life. But if I really need a, you know, a significant change, I'm going to have one of my students floss me out. (laughs) Oh, great. Any other uh, support for oral health in relationship to fascia? Any um, other tips that you can give us? Yeah, actually, I had a question for you. So lo- amazing that you use the meridians to help you kind of figure out what's going on. Like, as f- for instance, I know that if we have bleeding gums, it can be a stomach meridian or a large intestine issue, meaning there's too much heat somewhere in the body and stomach channel or large intestine. If the gums are pale and receding, it could be a spleen issue. I'm not an acupuncturist. So Um, my knowledge can't go into diagnosing in the mouth, but absolutely, um, getting that interoral work, working the palate, um, can change the configuration of the jaw and help the teeth settle. And and of course will impact the fascia, um, that, that is connecting with the gums. Um, but I was wondering, is there, I feel like I have a filament of memory here about each tooth being a different associated with different meridian. Is that yes, true? Okay. That is true. Yeah. So for example, wisdom teeth in the area of wisdom teeth that can relate to heart health and energy exchange. Oh, wow. Uh, when we're talking more about the front teeth, we uh, they're more connected to the bladder and the urinary tract. Right, right. Yeah. So people that have an abscess in the front teeth, uh, usually I can ask them, how's your bladder? How's your urinary health? And Uh typically we do find a connection. There you go. See? Uh, Smart Chinese medicine. Oh, yeah. And so um, teeth are associated with kidney bladder or kidney essence. So in Chinese medicine, they see the teeth as an extension of the bone. Would you agree Mm -hmm. with that? doctor i agree absolutely 100 percent. teeth are bone and i talk about this and, and definitely bone is alive people think you know bone is dead you know teeth are not alive they absolutely are and they can reshape just like fascia you can reshape teeth you can reshape bone so any structure in the body i believe can be reshaped absolutely i also think yeah. that once i started changing my fascia and just felt like my overall health and um, comfortability in my body just took a big leap forward. I wanted to just do all the things that made me feel good. Like it became easier to floss my teeth, for instance, which I hated to do before. <laughs> feel like you want to take care of yourself. So I would say that's kind of like the overall message about the thinking holistically in terms of the fascia, because it is the one thing that connects everything else 
you get this, wow, this amazing change in how you're feeling. And then you just want to keep feeling good. So you do the things that make you feel good. Like exactly. <laughs> well, one last thing I wanted to chat with you about, I have a lot of patients with headache, you know, especially the kind of tension headache. Ooh, and yeah. that be related to, to like fascia stagnation. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Especially if it's particularly a tension headache um, and it's probably rooted in coming from the shoulders. If you can recreate a headache by pushing on a certain area, then you probably know it is connective tissue related. Like say, like if I go to the chiropractor and they're pushing on my shoulder, I'm like, oh yeah, I feel it lighting up across the side of my head or this is gallbladder channel and and tcm around your temporalis here so that is a good way to kind of figure out is it that kind of headache and then again i would i would think holistically get down into your legs in your life what what's going on that's making you feel that tense in your body um then we go after the shoulders we go after the neck and the chest and the chest can actually give you some immediate relief just an overall tonation of the nervous system and of the tissues just like calm your system down working the chest can be a nice way to relieve neck and and headache stuff but yeah that that definitely that's a little hill to climb something to sort out and and figure out what's going on for sure but i have full compassion for people with tension headaches i know what that's like it's rough yes absolutely well everyone i hope we have convinced you to floss <laughs> that's very important and not just floss your teeth but you know help to floss your body go to floss that floss.com and really, I highly encourage you to try one of Bonnie's classes. It's really phenomenal. And uh, I mean, I whenever I floss, I feel amazing. And my posture is better. My shoulders are farther back. And I just feel lighter and more open. Amazing. Oh, Dr. Sanda, thank you so much for having me today. What a pleasure. Oh, Bonnie, it's been a pleasure. And I hope to see you soon. Yeah, see you soon. Take care. Bye. Bye. Please make sure you check out the show notes for any links mentioned in the show. Do you have a question you'd like me to answer? Message me on Instagram at Dr. Sanda. This is Dr. Sanda, and remember, your mouth is the gateway to your health, so take care of it in the most natural and best way possible. <laughs>